Good day. So as Ron mentioned, I do work for University of Manitoba. Prior to that, I worked at University of Winnipeg, where I experienced the uh, deep freeze in Active Directory. And prior to that, I worked at uh, University College of the North in the northern community, the PAW. Uh, so let's get going. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what deep freeze is, what it does, and some of, the, uh, some of what Active Directory does and how you can use it. Um, so deep freeze, for those who don't know about it, I'm sure most people know what Active Directory is, but for those who don't know what deep freeze does, it saves a state of the computer when you freeze it, and when you restart the computer, it returns to that state. So this, uh, this allows you to secure a computer in a different manner than normal. Uh, so the audience who's going to be interested in this are those who might be considering implementing Active Directory and Deep Freeze within their environments. Uh, so our objective today is to understand how Deep Freeze interacts with Active Directory. I'm going to start with uh, introducing the benefits of both tools. Then we'll look at some of the issues that can arise and how they can be prevented. So uh, we're going to first look at some of the reasons to use Deep Freeze and after Active Directory. So Deep Freeze can prevent computers from remaining part of a botnet if they get if they get infected. Uh, same thing with viruses. If you get a virus, restart the computer, it wipes out anything. Uh, if the system is compromised and some active tools are left behind on the computer, once again, after restart's gone. Um, computers in public spaces can be secured in a manner so that uh, user files, information, login credentials, things like that, are wiped out at the next restart. Um, this is great for public spaces such as labs within a university. Um, and if desired, you can give users local admin. They can install software upon the restart. Once again, gone. Uh, and then computers can also be thawed remotely, which is important for uh, what we'll discuss later on. With the Active Directory, uh, those of you who don't know, it can allow you to have unified logins. Um, it allows it to see so it can be set up so you're not having to have the text go out to each computer to create a local login for, for uh, the users. Um, so this is great for, once again, lab environments. Students come in, log into the machine, use it for while they're here, leave, and at the end of the day, computer's restarted. You've gotten, you've got, uh, with Deep Freeze, you've got rid of all that stuff that was left behind. Uh, it can also introduce things like single sign-on for services such as email if you're using Exchange, um, enterprise Wi-Fi if you're going to use your Active Directory for your login. Uh, it also allows group policy management, uh, and couple that with SCCM, computer management becomes a whole lot easier. Uh, reboots, imaging, software installs, all of that can be managed from a remote location. Uh, the ability to organize computers and users into organizational units is another great feature of Active Directory. Now, I also mentioned SCCM, so what is it? It stands for the System Center Configuration Manager. Uh, I also mentioned CCM later, which is Client Connection Manager. So SCCM allows for management of computers in your environment, everything from installing software and going, giving non-admin users the ability to install software from a selection to imaging computers remotely. Uh, it's all made possible by SCCM, and this includes the ability to force a reboot from remote. So some of the reasons to use the tools together. If you haven't already caught on, the, with tools like SCCM, you can force that reboot from afar. Couple that with deep freeze, and the computer can be returned to the most desirable state at any given time. Uh, and so this can be useful in multiple situations. A good example of this is if you're monitoring your network and you happen to notice that there's some pretty sketchy data coming from a couple of the computers in a lab across campus. Instead of sending out a guy, go all the way there, check it out, you can push out a notification to the users, say, hey, two minutes from now, the computer's going to restart, all your data will be gone. Please save anything you have to an external flash drive and, uh, and move to another location. Reboot the computer, Deep Freeze takes care of that, wipes out anything that might be on there. So if the users had installed stuff, got, somehow breached the security of the local machine, you're not, you don't have to be as worried about it. Now what can go wrong with introducing Deep Freeze into an Active Directory environment? Uh, so let's take a look. Active Directory and SCCM form a very stable environment. If part of CCM is deleted from a, compu from a computer, if you have the group policy enabled, it'll force it back, back onto the computer so it'll rebuild itself the next time it, uh, the next time it runs. Active Directory uses a token-based system to ensure that computers connected to the domain controller are the same, controller, the, uh, sorry, the same computers that were connected initially by the admin. Uh, so it, it uses a, uh, a password, as sometimes it's referred to. Now, it's by default one month 
that token expires. The next time the computer joins, even if it's two months down the road, the next time it communicates with that domain controller, picks up the new token. The next time it has to communicate with that domain controller upon next login, uh, then it'll actually give that new one as opposed to the original one. Now, what can happen is a password mismatch can occur if the token or password falls out of sync with the domain controller. And as I mentioned, deep freeze works by freezing the computer in the state it was when it, the application was applied. So first you must thaw the machine to make any permanent changes such as adding data to the machine, uh, applications, desktop backgrounds, security keys, uh, anything you might want to do. You have to thaw it, make that change, then refreeze it. And uh, deep freeze can be customized to leave areas of the hard drive or even whole partitions alone. Uh, meaning if you want to give a data drive for users that, that they can save their stuff to, that is an option as well. Now if a token change takes place while the whole computer is frozen, it will continue to communicate with the domain controller until the next reboot. When this reboot occurs, you will get the error that the trust relationship between this workstation and the primary domain has failed. Now, what this means is that mismatch has occurred. Now, the easiest solution is to take it off of the domain and to rejoin it. So with deep freeze already frozen, what this means is you have to thaw the machine, reboot it, and then take it off the domain, go ahead and reboot it again, rejoin it to the domain, refreeze it, rebooting it again. This takes a long time. Now we can avoid this. With deep freeze, there is the option to enable it to keep part of the operating system that takes on that token thought, as it were, uh, so that when the token change occurs, it does keep it upon reboot. Now, I've experienced in the past where because that wasn't enabled, we lost a lot of time. We had to go back and, and take a look at what went wrong. So you want to make sure that you have that enabled ahead of time so you don't experience that in your environment. Now, Deep Freeze also allows you to let group policy updates stay on the computer. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any screenshots or any way to demo this for you today, uh, as much as I would have really liked to. But uh, I do want to thank you very much for taking your time to, uh, to listen to my presentation. I'd like to open the floor for questions, if there are any. Are you up front here? Okay, so the question is uh, if it works with disk level encryption, like BitLocker. Um, my understanding is yes, it does, although there are some complications with how it's set up. You do have to pay attention to uh, if that's going to be changing, then I think Deep Freeze needs to be enabled to be aware of the change that could be taking place. If, uh, somebody in the back there? Um, it takes place at the at the boot level, uh, so it's actually freezing the the whole operating system as a as a whole. Um, now, if you had a multi boot, then it would only you'd only be freezing the boot part of Windows. You wouldn't be freezing, say, Linux. You at the very back. Uh, yes, any, anything that is thawed could be compromised, and that is something to be aware of. Um, so, for example, in a lab, you might have a departition for data storage that you leave thawed. Now, if an infection occurs on that partition, in theory, yes, it would continue to remain there because you reboot, Windows gets restored to the state, but that departition does not. I'm not that I'm aware of, but uh, they're always expanding their services, so it's perfectly possible. I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't one. I wouldn't be surprised if we see one in the future. Um, well, more than anything, it's just my examples apply more to universities when I mention labs, things like that. Um, this, I know, has been used for corporations. It's also been used for things like uh, internet cafes. Um, 
because it, it allows you to manage your entire cafe all at once. Uh, business level, I, I could definitely see applications for it, uh, but you do have to be aware that because it freezes the state of the computer, data loss occurs upon reboot, which can also mean data loss occurs upon a unexpected shutdown, uh, things like that. So it is, it, I don't know how beneficial it is to the average corporate environment. Uh, very special per case per case. Yeah, point of sale system, it would be, I think it would be really good. Uh, you do have to be careful that if, if any of those, any of the um, transactions that take place rely on remaining local to the, to the, the POS system, then that does get wiped out. Um, so it would be something to be careful of. I, maybe even use, using a network drive then. Go ahead. Well, SCCM opens the door for a lot of the uh, the software installation and stuff like that. Um, for example, you can create essentially an app store uh, for users to be able to go in and grab the the uh, repository of software that they want, uh, which Active Directory does not offer standalone. Uh, the way Microsoft sets up a lot of their stuff is it's individual little pieces. Um, so when you're looking at it, compare it to Novell. Novell, you're looking at console one, everything's right up front. You look at Active Directory, SCCM, group policy, uh, organizational units, all of it, you're looking at it at a separate section, uh, oftentimes with a separate application completely. Um, I'm actually not certain how they lock down their configuration file. That's something I've never actually researched. Uh, that's something now I'm going to have to go home and take a look into. So thank you. Any other questions? Sorry, I can't hear you at all. Yes, if if a compromise takes place uh, server side or not on a not on a frozen machine, then you're looking at that that is a security hole. Uh, but hopefully you're locking down your server and paying attention to your server. Uh, what we're looking at with Deep Freeze is just locking down that local machine. Uh, it's very good for public machines, so anything that's uh, that's in the in the open, anybody can log into them, that kind of thing. Um, and if you're leaving machines unattended for long periods of time where attacks like a botnet can occur and could be unmonitored for so long that you don't realize that it's been compromised, this does, uh, uh, does open the door for protection against that kind of stuff. Any other questions? No? All right.